I'm obviously not a conductor. But I think this symbolizes very well what I'd like to share with you, my impossible dream. My impossible dream is about music as a soul for Europe. And you can, by the way, tweet if you'd like to engage with me. <laughs> and I'd like to share this with you because I think the world is a stage. And to some extent, we all belong to a stage. I do myself belong to different worlds. Um, being at the same time an innovation manager in a big company called Deloitte. But I'm also a university teacher on EU affairs. And I'm also a singer, sometimes, and a cellist. And there are hidden parts of me you don't want to hear for now. I promise you don't want to hear about that. Or at another TED, maybe. Since I'm three years old, I'm fascinated by everything which is made out of wood. Trees, obviously, but also a piano and string instruments. My first love was when I was eight years old, and he was 250 years old. But the age difference didn't matter. It was with my cello, and every time I was hugging him, I felt like as if I were hugging a tree. My second love was not wood, but air. And I discovered that just with air, with your breath, you can actually sing. Everybody can sing, can sing not only me, of course. And when I discovered this, I felt this was like hearing the sound of music from a mountain top. Thank you. I was hoping you would sing with me, but perhaps another time. <laughs> right, so apparently Mountain is also a stage. Ted apparently is also a stage too, and everyday life is a stage. So I believe that buses, the metro, but also supermarkets, wherever, this can be a stage. Therefore, I'd like you to encourage to be the conductor of your own life and to just drive the change you would like to see happening. For me, this is very powerful so that someone can just raise his hand and just change, change the pattern, change what is going on. Who is a conductor here? Everyone? Oh. Thank you. 
So if this guy can just conduct from mountaintops or in Manhattan streets, if he can just conduct cars, I think everyone's, and you also, is able to conduct your own life. What, what about if next time you're really bored in the metro, because everyone is looking at his iPhone or looking at his shoes or your neighbor is talking with his dogs, well, what about if you would just stand up and recite your favorite poem in Italian, like Dante's Divine Comedy? Or, while that I'm talking this nonsense to you, what about if you were just drafting a poem and next time you're in the bus, you could just stand up and share it with the others? Well, my, my favorite thing, as far as I'm concerned, if I could do something, I think it would be when I go to the supermarket, I would just love singing opera. I think this would really make a difference. But some people already did it. Uh, I think in the Netherlands, a busy Saturday afternoon, the clients, the salesmen, and the cashiers, everyone was fancy dressed, and it was actually opera singers who sang in the supermarket. So um, what about you? What are you going to do? And especially, don't you think that music should get out of where it's usually? What about if music was just in the streets, available everywhere, in everyday life? Have you ever been hearing music in the metro? Or have you ever heard someone performing a play in the metro? I did. And it was really interesting. It was two guys playing Le Malade Imaginaire by Molière. And in this situation, you really love being in the metro. It really makes something really a surprise. how powerful music is? Do you realize how, how many things we could do in Europe if we used music? I'm personally passionate about the European Union. I've, um, I've studied, um, I have two masters in European Union affairs and I've worked in the European institutions and I lecture on European affairs at university but that's not the point. I think we have achieved a lot in Europe over the last 60 years. Is there a war between France and Germany today? Obviously not. Is it a problem to circulate across member states? Obviously not. We have created freedoms to, so that there is free circulation for goods, for people, for services, for capital. This is excellent, but this is not enough, even though we have institutions and common elections. With music, we can go beyond that. And we can go beyond that because when we play music or when we listen to music, instantly we can be connected. And I think we should do the experiment of connecting the 500 million inhabitants of Europe just by music. Because when I hear there is no sense of political togetherness, no sense of being together, I really think we should do play music. Or if you prefer dancing, it can be dancing. We'll have perhaps a little demonstration of that after that. But whatever you like, whether it's painting, whether it's music, whether it's dancing, just go for it. Just stand up and express it. I'm telling you that because I think we, we face not only a financial crisis, but also an, an identity crisis where people are looking for their values. And once 
I saw people dancing outside of the European Parliament, just in front of the European Parliament. And I thought, what a great way to unite European citizens. So this was dancing outside the European Parliament. My dream was to play music inside the European Parliament. Well, thanks to Naomi Takagi, we, we made it. And not only I did sing, but I also tried to play the piano, and I also tried to play the cello. So you will see some extract after that. And it was a collective project to gather EU officials and to raise awareness about climate change. So we played Bach's Goldberg Variations, all together, different instruments, and that was really powerful. Another thing I did, a bit crazy, was I felt like singing the Ode to Joy, but a cappella version and jazz and classical together. So a friend of mine is a jazz singer in Paris, and so she composed a new version. And the flag you see here, actually I made a dress out of it, which was not typically a dress, and if there are any fashion designer, please help us create a uh, European dress, because I didn't really manage. But if you go on YouTube, you'll find this uh, a cappella ode to joy. And um, so I invite you to express your own ways to feel music and Europe. And it can be through dancing, but please express yourself. <laughs> It was obviously not too easy because I'm not a pianist, so I just wanted to take the challenge, just for to play in the European Parliament. But this what we did for Europe. We could do it in other parts of the world because music is a universal language. So this could go actually beyond the other continents. And I studied one year in Poland, and I was in the College of Europe for one year with 30 different nationalities. And we obviously had a lot of fun also singing together, 30 different nationalities. And that was also a time when I was interested into the Middle East. This is an orchestra, the East-West Divan Orchestra, gathering young, talented musicians from the Middle East. And this is an incredible initiative where people that normally don't, that people who normally don't look at each other and don't talk to each other play music. And they are Jewish, they are from Palestine, they are from all over the Middle East. And this is what can, music can achieve, not only in Europe, but also in the rest of the world. And I also traveled to the Middle East and to the West Bank and I went to refugee camps. And I was really desperate by the political situation. And I think that sometimes only music can achieve something. So whenever there is a conflict, whenever it's personal, collective, societal, people should create this common breath. They should play music together or at least listen to each other. Because sometimes words are not enough. Sometimes UN Security Council resolutions are not enough. And I think why not? Why the United Nations shouldn't have an orchestra, for instance? Maybe that music is more powerful than words sometimes. So, guys, that was 
my impossible dream I wanted to share with you. This impossible dream that we should have music as a soul for Europe. And also in our other continents. Because music in itself is a change maker. Music can open up people's hearts and can reunite people. 